Hey, I'm Matt Hudgens, and he's Dave Mulvaney, and this is Profitability MD. Dave, how you doing today, buddy? Doing great today, Matt. How about you? Life's pretty good. Life is good. Um, episode right. 51. <laughs> episode 51? I like That means next week will be 52? That's unbelievable. That'll be it. Episode 52 next week. One year. That's unbelievable. So, um... I thought we'd go through, uh, call this episode, how to increase profits by six figures in 12 months. Okay. Kind of a case study of an HVAC contractor, but I think it's applicable to anybody's business, um, how to add profits to your bottom line. Right. And this is a, this is just for anybody who watches this or listens to it. This is an actual client who implemented what, what we teach. That's client of Matt's what we teach. And, this is, this is the results as we're going to the results. Yeah. We were just, uh, 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 talking at the end of the year. Hey, how's this year gone? Give me some numbers. And he was really excited to kind of share some of this stuff. So I'm going to, I'm going to share kind of the case study, uh, HVAC contractor. So obviously does installation of, of new air conditioned heaters, um, duct work, all that kind of stuff. And so there are ways to increase that type of business. You know, we've talked about the five ways to grow a business. You need more, more leads it means more opportunities. You need more conversions. So once you get in front of somebody, can you close a deal? Number three, increase number of transactions with those clients that you sign up. And number four was increase your profit uh, or prices. I'm sorry, your pricing, which is really more like bundling things together, which, and then number five is increase your profits by making better use. So this is really going to fall under increase the number of transactions from existing clients. Okay. So this is that number three area. How do we increase the number of transactions from existing clients? So we came up with this idea. There are a lot of different things you can do in a service business. Um, but let's just show you what he did in the last uh, 12 months. So HVAC contractor, let's do adding cleaning out the duct work. You know, the, the ducts get all dusty and dirty and you have allergies. I have bad allergies. You need to clean out the ducts to, to decrease the number of allergies and stuff like that. So, um, so they have this, like this vacuum they put like on the duct and it like sucks everything. I don't know how exactly it works, but that's one, that's how they do it. They got this vacuum and it just sucks like it everything sucks it out. And then they got to wipe out the vents. So they hand, you know, they wipe down your vents, like, cause there's dust right there on the vent. But at the end of it, yeah, like the whole, getting all the dust out of things. And especially like, I got allergies. I don't know how bad you got allergies. I have, I have really bad allergies right now. In fact, this half of my head is clogged up because of the allergies. So, so it's like, everybody should have this done. And I, I don't even remember the stats. Uh, maybe it's like, you know, look at the, Al the Allergen Institute and I'm making this up. I have no idea what it was, but the Allergen Institute has something about, you know, you should get your duct work cleaned every whatever, three years or something. I don't know. So we didn't even have to get into this. This is the beauty. And you and I could augment this with better coaching, even more coaching, right? Cause we could come and, up and with better it. copywriting. Absolutely. And better copywriting. That's right. Cause we could have, you know, here the study says you got to have it done every year or every two years or whatever. We didn't even have to do this. This is how easy this was, right? So um, this was literally asking existing clients, right? So when you have your crew, um, I should say, when you have your crew out there doing some air conditioner repair or installation, simply get them all to ask, hey, your ducts look a little, your duct work looks a little dirty. Would you like to have those clean, right? That's all it was. That's, we got to have the existing guys, existing crew just ask, hey, it looks a little dirty. Would you like to have that clean, right? No big sales pressure, no high job. Um, and what's important to part, if I can add to that is you're not, you don't have a salesperson there. You have a technician there asking this yep. question. So. Yep. Simple question. Just ask it as you're installing. Hey, that looks a little dirty. Would you like help cleaning that out? Now what he had was he uh, had two guys that he dedicated to doing uh, the duct work cleaning okay. and he had a truck. So, so he didn't have to buy the truck, but he did have to pay those employees. And he, and he came up with a comp structure that was based off of, um, they could do two or three jobs per day. And so it was kind of a salary plus a little bonus, but I don't want to get into that, but, but I'll show you the numbers here at the end, but we'll figure, you figure out the comp structure, but he had to pay two more people to do this job. Didn't have to buy a truck because he already had it. And I think he already had that duct cleaning stuff that you already talked about. Um, so over the course of a year, these get two guys could do um, two to three jobs. I'm sorry. They took them two to three hours to clean the ducts and they could do two to three jobs per day. So now on a per day basis, these guys are bringing in somewhere between 900 and, oh, I should tell you. And he was charging in the winter time, he charged $485 per system. So by the way, talk about simplicity. 
we looked at all the different ways you can price this. Like a lot of people price it by linear feet of ductwork you have. A lot of guys price it by the square footage of your house. We just want simplification because we don't want to confuse customers. Talk about our messaging. We've talked about that before. When you, when you confuse me, I don't know if it's a, if it's a $500 or a $300 or a $750 thing. I don't make a decision. There's, right? There is something that in, um, there's a marketing uh, term that says, the confused mind decides nothing. Correct. Yes. So this is why, that's why it's so important when you said yes. simplicity. Yes. Simplicity. And so we came up with the pricing structure. Yeah, exactly right. Because we looked into this. All, how are we going to charge it and all this stuff? And we kind of backed and we're like, you know, make it simple. It's uh, during the winter time when we're slow, 485 bucks per system. So if you got in Atlanta, we got two story houses, sometimes three story houses. So you got two or three systems, right? I don't know what it's like in Florida. Maybe we, you know, so you're going to have it's a number of systems. Who cares? So 485 bucks in the winter, it's basically 595 in the summer because he's more busy. He wants to charge you more. You know, we're trying to keep the guys busy in the winter time, right? So there's kind of your different price structures. A little cheaper in the winter because we're less active. A little, uh, a little more expensive in the summertime because it's kind of added bonus. Why not? They're willing to pay for it. Which okay? would be, it'd probably be reverse if they were in the north. So probably be reverse in the north. Exactly right. Um, with, yeah, slow, slow versus fast times, right? So it's just like, uh, you know, the uh, Sonic offering uh, whatever discounted slushies from 3 to 5 p.m., right? Because that's their slow time that they'll offer. Ha happy hour, right? Happy yeah, hour I was going to say bars do that too. I wouldn't know. I've been, you know. I, I, I wouldn't know that. <laughs> I know you wouldn't. <laughs> no. So what this resulted, so, so between, and the, so anyway, the total number, so anyway, it's twenty-five dollars to $35,000 a month in the winter time. And in the summertime, he had a month where he did $45,000. This is just on this additional service. So at the end of the year, uh, 260,000 in revenue. He had to pay those guys. Those guys ended up getting paid really nice, 50,000 a piece for doing this. Uh, so basically 100,000. So he netted $160,000 of his bottom line. He didn't do one job. He didn't do one. He didn't clean one system at all. Right. Um, what we ended up doing is, so that's kind of the numbers, you know, adding $160,000 profit to this guy's HVAC, right? Two guys, we paid him $50,000 a piece. He had the equipment. All we did was the existing clients, while they're out, the other guys, while they're out on a service, hey, your ducks look a little dirty, can we clean them, right? That's what we did. The other thing we did was we did go back to past clients, right? So we've talked about this in the past, would be anybody you've done business with in the past, you can go back. He did a decent job of having contact information, emails, because email's cheap and easy, right? And it was simply a little email sequence. You're, you know, you're the copywriter. Just a little email sequence. I think it was three or four emails we put together that are just, hey, we've got a new service offering uh, where we clean your ducks. You know, a couple of little reasons why you want your ducks to be clean, d dust and allergies and yada, yada, yada. Good for babies, all that kind of stuff. So it was a real simple campaign. And you and I, like I said, we didn't even go after new customers, right? We never marketed this as an, as he, that's what we were talking about. His goal for 2020 is going to be to, can I ramp that from 260 to 380? Can I get 120 grand by starting to market outside as a standalone business? Can I, can I start marketing just the duct cleaning business uh, by itself? Cause we haven't even done that. We've just done it as an add on. So we got to right? pause for a second. You get, yeah, sorry. you put so much into that, which is no, it's, it's awesome. So, um, everybody needs to hear you, you did three or four simple emails. You helped them craft those. I take it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Three or four simple emails. Didn't hire a copywriter. Didn't you just simply gave a, a, a marketing message and you put it in front of an existing clientele, which was warm market. Yep. So that is critical. So he, he generated $260,000 in sales by putting in, we'll just say an average message in front of a warm market. So it yes. doesn't matter if you get the right message in front of the right audience, it produces re results all the time, regardless of how well crafted that message it was. I'm, I'm not knocking your copy. Oh, no, I'm saying, I think this could be tweaked even better. I'm, I'm completely agreeing with you. This was a, uh, let's just get it done and see what happens. I mean, you could make it copywriting better on the emails. You could have the scripts better on the technicians. You could have the calls better from the receptionist. I mean, Yes, this all could be tweaked even better. But from a case study standpoint, here's a guy, owns a business, puts together a three to four email series to his existing clients, hires two guys to handle the business, 
Yep. So he employs two guys, not on average pay, 50 grand they make each. So, but these are not the most qualified guys on the planet because if right. they were, they'd actually be working on air conditioners instead of sucking crap out of duct. Right. Okay, so it's important to understand that these are not the highest level technicians, which means- Great point, great point. You're inserting, I don't want to, like I used to say, monkeys can install LED lighting. No. This uh, was great pay for these guys. Yes, so the this- level of skills are, that it takes, this is a great pay. These are yes. apprentice level skills. So you got apprentice level skills, three to four average emails, and you got an owner who nets 160 grand in profit. That is a mouthful of marketing mm -hmm. right there. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. I mean, it is, it is, but it's the epitome of what else can we offer? What other service can we provide to our existing clients, our existing customers, our existing, right? And, and this is a case where he was able to do it himself, right? But now I'm changing off the case study. We could have easily found a duck work company to team up with and, and have a referral arrangement, right? Right. where he didn't have to hire two people. And like I said, he had the equipment, um, but we could have had a, a, a joint venture, right? Where we team up with. So you don't have to be the supplier of that extra product, right? Uh, we talk about online stuff all the time. That's what affiliate marketing is, right? You've got a bunch of followers and, and I'm gonna sell, you know, this koozie product to all my clients. So, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sell this uh, microphone to all my clients followers, right? That's, that's what affiliate marketing is, right? Yes. And, and so, but also from an advertising standpoint, here's what's so um, cool about marketing in itself. So I'm going to use the car industry as an example. The car industry, they will spend every single penny, every nickel, every dime that they make on a brand new car to get you into the buy that car. And not, they won't make a penny on the car. And people are like, really? They've spent it all on advertising just to get you in the front door where they make the money is on the upsell. And the upsell is they get you to buy the extended warranty, the paint guard, the, the spinner rims, whatever you want. I don't, I don't know all the upsells, but it's the same thing here. This guy did this to an existing customer base, but yep. if he was running advertising, perhaps this product could be the upsell. He could be advertising like almost a, uh, uh, no, well, you have to have a margin, but the margin could be like, a, he could be advertising air conditioners at a, let's just say at a $600 profit. And he breaks even with the cost of the install with his labor and the cost of the advertising to put that air conditioner in. But every time they go to the job, they do the upsell. The upsell can be the, the where you make the money. And that's, you know, increasing the number of transactions with existing clients, even on new clients, this could be an upsell feature. Um, Absolutely. Every time that, that the HVAC guys were on a service call, again, they're asking, hey, your ducks look a little dirt, uh, dirty. Would you, would you like some help with that? Like some cleaning? You know, we were talking about next uh, 2020. I'm checking my ducks to see if they're dirty. Oh, there you go. Well, that's what we're talking about would be, you know, could, we, could it be the other way around where could it, you advertise the duck cleaning service in and of itself and would that lead to HVAC contract work, right? So if you're selling the $500 per unit, clean your, your, your ducks this winter. When we when that could be people who are not even their clients. Right. And then once that those two guys get in there, could they upsell? Hey, do you have a service contract in your HVAC? Hey, your unit. Right. So maybe by leading. The Hang product. on a second. You're breaking up a second, man. Okay. Hold on. So what I'll, I'll, I'll pipe in while you're tell me when you're stable, but so, you could use this as the lead in. Yep. And, and the lead in could mean you're paying for advertising. As long as you can break even on the lead in, the first step of a ladder, if you will, if you can break even. So this could be the, I'm, I'm running advertising, advertise, advertise, advertise. We make one sale. Those two costs, wash. The upsell is where you make your money. Hey, uh, Mrs. Smith, I see that uh, we cleaned your ductwork, but I noticed mold buildup in your air handler. So we have this UV light that can prevent that mold buildup. So that's the upsell. That's All the upsell. Yes. You make money above the cost of the advertising. This is how you grow a company, fresh leads and get on the first call, they move to the second step. That's what you want to try to do. And I, I broke in only because you were breaking up a little. No, no, this is perfect. No, but when you say that, you remind me. So, so literally, we have, uh, I've got another friend of mine that has uh, in, 
uh, interior design, inter interior uh, decorating company, right? Uh, they sell furniture and fabrics, okay? F really, really high end. I mean, like high end stuff. Like curtains and yeah, yeah. Curtains and stuff and like, and like multi million dollar yachts. You want to get that finished. He, uh, so anyway, and he's selling other people. So he's a distributor, right? So it's other people's furniture, it's other people's fabrics. He's just kind of the distributor, but it's very, very high end. He offered his own um, leather, his own high-end leather company, right? So he goes to Italy. That's where apparently you get really good leather. So he's selling leather inside his own showroom that is no overhead, super high margin, and he's already selling it to the existing people that are buying all the other furniture and fabric in his place, right? So now it turns out the most profitable part of his business is the leather business. The add-on, like you, that's what it reminded me. You know, the, the business is doing fine, but there are a lot of employees, there are a lot of moving parts. The, le the leather business is just awesome, right? Not a lot of moving parts, very high margin. It's the better business now, right? My advice to him is if you're gonna sell one of them, sell the other one and keep the leather business. Well, you know, it's funny. Uh, do you have, uh, like what are the major, well, you have major gas station chains up by you. The Wawa is this big one in Florida now. Sure, sure. Uh, but, okay, so for the longest time, they're now called C stores and they're okay. called quick serve, uh, but they're doing a lot more. But you have to understand, they put $2.29 to get you into their parking lot. Right, right. And they might only be making 10 cents a gallon, which is 5%. I mean, it's like nothing, under 5% but just to get you into the parking lot and you fill up your vehicle, they, they only want you to walk into the building. Into the store. Right. So you got Wawa down there. There's we do quick trips up here in Atlanta, the same kind of, but they've all got the kitchens now where you can buy pizza and lunches, uh, you know, chicken biscuits for breakfast, you know, sausage, egg and cheese, Whatever. heat it up in the microwave, Coca-Cola's right. And it's funny you say that. I remember reading this, some sort of article or, or, or story years ago about how originally the gas stations where they made the money on the gas, yes. they started having the service station. So they made money like servicing your car, you know, doing repair and auto work. Then the convenience store aspect came in. And so you started seeing the service centers being closed because they make more money, not servicing your car, but they make more money selling your Coca-Colas. Yeah. Right. And so now that's why it's really hard to find like a service station per se. Because if you owned a, con uh, a gas station, you were making more money having a gas station in a convenience store than you were having a gas station in an auto repair store. Well, yeah, and I'm from Wisconsin. When I was a kid, I worked at a gas station, and they had a, in Wisconsin, of course, it's winter, a, a, a very long period of time up there. That's why I'm in Florida. But um, they had the full service drive up. So somebody would pull up to the full service pump and you'd walk out and they'd pay 25 cents more a gallon to have me pump the gas and right. sometimes they'd even give you a tip but at 25 cents more a gallon i'll just have somebody else pump it for them so they didn't have to get out of their nice warm car and i'd have to sit out there in the freezing cold uh pump of the gas for them but people would pay for the service right. and that, but you hardly see that anymore except when i drove through new jersey um People are not qualified to pump their own gas in the state of New Jersey. I, I got out of my car, started fire filling up, and they're like, you can't do that. I'm like, what do you mean? I've been doing it my whole life. But that's New Jersey. They're backwards a little bit. But anyway, um, but that's the point is the upsell. They'll spend every dollar to get you in the door to make the upsell. And this is a great marketing, um, I guess you could say tip, whatever you want is, you don't look at marketing as you're trying to make money on the first thing you're marketing. You, you make a break even there, or maybe even a little bit more. If you can make a break even or a little bit more, you can grow your business any size because it's that next step. If you're good at the next step and you've planned it well, the next step can make you very profitable. Right. Exactly. You just reminded me, we're talking about uh, digital marketing. I listen to a lot of uh, podcasts and stories on digital marketing stuff. And that's what they call like a tripwire. You've got the, the $10 or the $20 product that you're selling. And really all you're trying to do is pay for the advertising, right? So if you offer this little $20 product or $20 ebook, and that'll pay for the advertising, because now that I know you're a buyer, I can sell you to my next program. I can sell you to my $100 product, my $500 product, right? So the, so the upsell, they break even on the first client. We, we have, uh, gosh, we have that all the time with uh, 
well, that's what advertising is for the Walmarts and the Targets and this and, and this whole, uh, you know, Cyber Monday, expert secrets. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, Russell. The reason, the reason I held this up is what Russell Brunson does. He takes the physical book. Um, you can have the book for free. You just pay shipping and handling, $7.95. And the okay. $7.95 is enough to co cover the printing of the book and the shipping of the book. Maybe right. even he's losing money on that. But the next thing he's going to sell you on, once you've put your credit card information in, the next thing's going to happen is you're going to get an upsell to a $49 or a $99 um, possibility. One-time offer, OTO, it's called one-time offer. And that one-time offer more than covers and puts them in a profitable position off giving away the book. Right. Give away a book for free so they can sell you a $100 product, which is pure profit. And then the $100 product, of course, is going to go through a series of emails and drive you into very profitable $297 a month click funnels or something like that or three thousand dollars a year whatever and that's that's the point of marketing is yeah and that's the old retail stuff lost leader right so you get them in the grocery store offering you know hamburger on sale right and then you hope they're going to do the rest of grocery shopping right walmart does it the tv's on sale you know black friday the the tv's on sale the computer's on sale the ipad's on sale get you in the door that's the lost leader because so we hope you do the rest of your shopping at that store right so that's exactly right but what, it, what could happen is sometimes that loss leader could become the profit center. And in this case, we're talking about maybe the loss. Well, this one, the loss leader, this was actually pure profit pretty much to begin with. Let's just add on a upsell of clean the duck work. And let's just go ask all existing clients and all past clients, would you like your ducks clean? Right? That was beautiful. It's still unbelievable to me that the $160,000 in net revenue Net, a net, no, profit, net profit, right? net revenue. Had two sixty in revenue. Paid two people to be on the job doing it, um, and then and then he makes one hundred sixty thousand um, dollars. If he had four employees in the office that he's paying forty thousand dollars to, he just paid all their salaries with right, just right, right. getting his technicians to ask one simple question. One simple question. Yeah. It's really funny. So again, that's an HVAC, but like literally I was telling you this before we got on the call, my landscape. So I got my landscape guy who I love and we're working with him and teaching him messing around. And uh, my wife, actually, my wife's really funny. So we needed a uh, new pine straw. Hey, and so she doesn't mind asking the guy, right? Hey, we need some more pine straw. Can you lay the pine straw for us? Um, she asked him about cleaning our gutters. You know, the gutters get stuck with the leaves here and can you, you know, blow them out? Um, and then, switch out the flowers. Patty wanted to switch out the flowers in the front of the house and, and the mailbox, right? Those are three upsells that my wife's actually asking to be upsold to, right? He didn't offer it to us. Patty's like, oh, I need some pine straw. I need to uh, blow out the, the gutters and um, new flowers, right? And I was like, well, that's awesome. I don't even know how much it costs. And I'm sure he made some money. I don't know if he charged me enough or not. But my comment to him was what was like, why don't you ask every single one of your clients this question? Would you like some pine straw? Would you like your gutters blown out? That's a big deal here. You know, I don't know. In Atlanta, you get a bunch of leaves and stuff. Pine straws fall into your gutters, so you got to clean them out two or three times a season. Like it's a big. And now, you know, we're getting old. I don't want to fall off the roof and mess up my golf game. <laughs> well, you know, okay, so I'm with you. But yeah. the same conversation I had with a roofing contractor here, literally this past week. Yeah. yeah. Um, I said, do you do gutters? Nah, I don't do gutters. I'm like, you just told me that roofs, like you make almost like no money on a roof. Why don't you get the roofing job? And then once they sign on the dotted line, oh, Mrs. Smith, I, I, our I, I'm sorry, you call her back. So now you got the, the contract signed or you're still there, contract signed. Um, Mrs. Smith, you're gutters are a little rusty. It'd be a shame to put a brand new roof on with those rusty gutters. Why don't we replace the gutters uh, for you? And this month we're running a little special with these little gutter caps. And there so you, go. you can have all the profit in the world on the gutters because Mrs. Smith is already committed to buy the roof from you. Right. Um, right. You, sell, you sell gutters. Right. And exactly right. I'll even, I completely agree with that. I would even say joint venture, right? Have another gutter company do it for them and you're sending the referral and you're splitting the profit or you're getting a referral fee, right? So you don't have to become a gutter expert, although it's probably pretty easy to do it themselves. But I'm glad you brought that up because see, exactly that, right. that would be the biggest objection is a lot of people, well, I don't do gutters. Well, yeah. But if you can put 10% on the gutters and right. a referral and if that referral person is also flipping deals to you that you're paying 10%, it's, it's a right. good 
way to increase revenue. Right. Or how about let's go, how about you just lead, you get a kid to do the gl clean gutters. While he's cleaning gutters, he's looking for holes in the roof. Now, now you're actually getting paid to clean the gutters, but he's really your spotter for roof repair or re roof replacement. Hey, Mrs. Luck. Jones, it looks like your roof has some hail damage. I have learned one thing about roofs, though. Okay. If a kid can see a hole in it, I'm guessing that the owners of the house already knew that they're they aware that it is a trouble. Yes. And so maybe some training involved. I don't know how easy it is to identify. I don't know roof. either, but I'm with but you. That could be your lost leader, right? Now you can have just a kid going around the whole neighborhoods. Hey, we're blowing out gutters. But what is his real motive is to spot for, for roof repair jobs. Right? So I have a friend who uh, uh, literally does pressure washing on houses. And, um, and so he, his whole thing was, what do you think that I could do to get some low cost advertising? I said, why don't you um, call the local Boy Scout leader and ask him if he's got any kids that would like to go and hand flyers out and just hang them on the doorknobs. And you could probably pay the kids, you know, whatever minimum wage is. I actually didn't even say minimum wage. I just said you probably pay the kids five, six bucks an hour in cash and they'll go do it. They'll go hang them all day long. And they, why Boy Scouts? Because they have the integrity that they're actually going to hang sure. flyers. Sure. Okay. Integrity. See, these are things that aren't necessarily taught in a lot of organizations, but it's taught to the Boy Scouts. Um, but, and he's a great idea. He's busy as can be as a pressure washing company. Now he's, he's got so busy that he won't take any two story houses. He's been able to say, I don't want to do any two story because <laughs> I can make so much on, on single story houses. That's pretty cool. That's really cool. That's really cool. All just by using Boy Scouts and, um, and a basic brochure. Again, I didn't write the brochure. Right, right. Better copy, better results. <laughs> Come on. I need to hire you, Dave. I get it. So. No, but this was great. So anyway, that was just wanted to do kind of a little case study of how um, more tra increase number three increase the number of transaction with existing clients. This was HVAC guy. He had another service which was cleaning out the ducts, um, and from that he added uh, 260 in revenue, 160 in profit. He didn't have to do any of the work. And as we head into 2020, you know, this is just this is basic business 101. When you're sitting there, you're, you're at your office at seven o'clock at night asking yourself, how can I increase my revenue? Yep. Well, this, this is exactly how you just, whether you're in HVAC or whether you're in flowers, it doesn't matter. You've got to think of the upsell and what you no, can and, sell to the existing clients. And we've, so, I mean, and we've done many examples before, but even just on this call, right? We talked about the landscaper doing the pine straw and the gutters. We talked about the roofer doing the gutters. That's an upsell. We talked about my design buddy who's, who did the leather business, added another service. That's different. I mean, this works in any business, in any industry. You just got to give some thought to it. Uh, this is what you and I do for clients, right? We call it, there, there's money just sitting there, you know, how to find $160,000 in your business, right? It's there. It's a little idea like this that has worked a hundred times with a hundred other business owners, right? It's, it's the insurance guy who upsells you into term, you know, the, the home and auto guy who sells you term life insurance, right? It's the, it's the, uh, I get a car wash special over here who upsells me into the manager special, which includes some sort of wax coating or wheel shine. I don't know, but it's an extra two bucks, right? So pure profit for him. I don't know how much it costs to do the, you know what I'm saying? Oh, sure. How many people upgrade at the car wash and they go yes. the, between the, the least and the deluxe. They buy that middle yes. one and it's a $4 upgrade. You right. know, it, it probably, there's it a whole, anything. we didn't even talk about, there's a whole pricing thing that talks about, and I can't remember if this is that Caldini guy, you know, a, a persuasion. Robert Caldini, yep. Yeah. Caldini, however his name is pronounced. However his name is Emerson. It's about the same thing. Please, oh, I'm going out again. Yep, hang on a minute. So, but Caldini, I think is how it's pronounced, but. Okay, and then there's a whole pricing thing, and I can't remember if it's him, about people, we always choose the one in the middle. You know, we, we, we rarely choose the one that's the most expensive and then we don't want to seem too cheap. So we don't want that one. So we usually get the one in the middle. And so then there's this whole pricing strategy that kind of says, you know, gold, silver, and bronze and 80% and of your sales will be in the silver. So then you could actually, what's my pricing? You know, darn well, they're not going to pay $10,000, but you're hoping they'll pay 2,500 because that looks like a bargain, right? So there's a whole, there's a whole pricing structure that says, you know, do your prices, because they're gonna choose the middle most likely. So you could have a really expensive one that maybe one or 2% of people are gonna get. And then you could have this really 
cheap one that kind of you break even on or you make a little bit of profit on. And then there's the silver deluxe version, which everybody ends up buying. Anyway, that's a little sidetrack, but there, there are pricing tricks that you can add to this repertoire, right? Yeah, and man, and what's important, I think um, 99%, if you're on Facebook, you see all of these gurus. Yep. You need more leads. You need more leads. You need more leads. And, and what we're talking about is, yeah, you can get more leads. That's great. But we're talking about you don't always have to get more leads when you have existing clients. The only way you can't go back to those existing clients is if you're a crappy business person, you don't take care of them in the first place. Right. The we case, can't help you that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, then, then you got to fix your business model. But if you take care of your clients, then you get the opportunity to go back because they'll buy from you. They trust you. They'll keep buying from you as long as they continue to trust you. And what that means is, hi, Mr. or Mrs. Smith, your ducks are dirty. You clean those ducks. And psychologically, they, they're, they're happy. And, and the ducks are actually clean. They have better sinuses and they feel better. They trust you again. Then you get the opportunity to go back and sell them that UV light. Then you get the opportunity to go back and sell them the gutter cover. I mean, whatever, you know, different businesses. Right, whatever it comes into. Exactly. Take care of your clients and you don't have to get as many new ones on an annual basis. Yeah. So that's, that's the kind of stuff that you and I do. That's the kind of stuff that we do that we want to teach our clients. This is the kind of stuff we're talking about. We're going to do an uh, event here coming up in the next couple of months. This is the kind of stuff you, I want you to leave the event with, with, with a plan like this might be an, an upsell for you. It might be uh, more leads for you. It depends on what type of business you are. But I just wanted to give this as an example of, of increase the number of transactions from existing clients. It's the kind of stuff you and I teach. It's money that's just sitting there available for you to pick up as a business owner to add to your bottom line. Right? I don't know anybody who can't use an extra $160,000. <laughs> I could use a little more. I don't know. I mean, I that's, that's a lot, Matt. I mean, that's I mean, what is that? Twelve five a month, roughly, off the top of my head. That's that's a pretty good chunk of change. Big dollars. Free All right, man. This was a good one. Uh, where can we find the famous Dave Mulvaney? DavidMulvaney.com. You can connect with me on LinkedIn at David Mulvaney, and uh, um, coming soon, ProfitabilityMD.com. ProfitabilityMD.com. We're on uh, iTunes, of course, and we're on YouTube channel, ProfitabilityMD on YouTube, ProfitabilityMD on anywhere you get your podcast, iTunes, Stitcher. Spotify, all that kind of stuff. And let's see, Matt Hudgens, I'm over at LinkedIn and then uh, 10xprofitblueprint.com, 10xprofitblueprint. Uh, that's my coaching website. So this Matt, is good stuff, man. Great show. All right, we'll see you. See you. Take care.